April is upon us, and that brings spring cleaning to mind. In this video, we're going to talk about inactive listings and whether you need to delete them from your listings. Coming up now. Hello everybody, it's Manny from Manny's Book Bag. I'm back with another video. This was a requested video. Nicole, this video is for you. Thank you for the question. I was asked whether it was important to delete inactive listings and to just give a general idea of my process and maybe show you what I do. When I started selling on Amazon a couple of years ago, I never paid inactive listings any attention. I always just let them stay inactive and build up. That changed as I became aware of how Amazon operates. Sometimes a product will become ineligible for sale on Amazon through the manufacturer or the textbook publisher, uh, depending on what item it is. Some of these may have to do with FDA regulations, uh, changes to Amazon policy, uh, whatever motivates it. There's times when Amazon is going to send out the bots. Now it's very important to understand what the bots are and what they do. The bots are not people. Bots are not intelligent. They follow a set of rules. Unfortunately, if you sold an item several months ago, even if your listing is inactive, a bot can find it. Now you having this product in your inventory, whether it's active or inactive, could result in an email from Amazon, a notification, possibly a warning. It has, in retail arbitrage, it has even led to suspensions. Most recently, newer sellers, when they were suspended, were suspended for selling books as new. Now, I'm sure that a lot of those books were in inactive inventory as well. So yes, I delete old listings, and I do so fairly regularly. If you're a part-time or a lower volume seller, going through your older sales is probably not a big deal if you do it monthly but what if you're selling 500 600 a thousand or more well going through your sales one by one to delete the inactive listings might become pretty time prohibitive i discovered a solution for myself that works really well and while i'm not saying that it's the best way to do it i can say that it works really well for me but I can probably show you much better than I can explain it. So let's go to my screen. And here we are. I have gone into Seller Central and I am checking out my inventory in my Manage Inventory page. Now, whenever I'm gonna remove some items, I always go in and check off inactive. And then I'll go to Date Created and I will click it so that it puts them in order from oldest to newest. From here it's pretty simple. If you are a part-time seller or a lower volume seller, you would just go through and you would begin checking off the ones that are older that have sold in the past. Now if you want Amazon to put returns back into inventory for you, I would tell you to probably only delete the listings that sold 60 days ago or longer. And if you're at that volume and you do this every two weeks or every month, it should be pretty manageable for you. But when my monthly sales started creeping into the five to 600 item range, that kind of became time prohibitive for me. But I also don't let Amazon return items into inventory for me. I always recall those back to me. So if I do delete a listing, that recently sold that doesn't really bother me as much now you're gonna see how easily these can build back up on you I haven't done it in the last month or two and I am back up from having seven or eight hundred inactive to over two thousand again so it is something that is gonna build up fairly quickly if you don't stay on top of it here's another tip for you it is much easier to delete your listings if they take up a full page in Manage Inventory. That way, if you're going to delete all the items on the page, you can simply check this here, and it checks all of the items off. And then from there, it becomes really easy just to come down to 
delete products and listings. I currently have my page set up to have 250 listings at a time on there. If that number is too high and you need a lower number so that every item on your page should be deleted, you would go up here to preferences and you would change the number of items per page. That will help you go through this really quickly. I go through my oldest inventory and I delete them all. If an item were to ever get returned, Amazon would just put it into stranded inventory. By doing so, I ensure that there's no way they ever put it back into my inventory and then I can just have it removed and sent back to me from there. And that's really all there is to it. And we're back. Pretty easy, right? It works for me. It's pretty simple. It gets me in and out of the computer and I get to do other things. One more tip for you. If you ever find that you're going to sit at your computer and delete a large number of items at once, whether you just decided that it's time to sit down and call some bad inventory or whether in the future Amazon ever gives us another free removal period, if you're ever going to delete items in large quantities, this tip might actually help you get through the removal and keep your inactives nice and neat. Here's what I do. When I go through all my items and I check them off as I go that I'm going to remove them, I don't go to a removal. Here's why. Let's think about what happens. You check these items off and then you remove them. Well, if your goal is to keep your inactive inventory low, you just made a whole bunch of inactive listings. Instead, when you check them off, delete the listing. Hear me out. I know it sounds wrong, but here's what I do. When I check them all off to remove, I delete the listing. Now my inactives are nice and neat. You may ask yourself, hey, Manny, you had a whole bunch of stuff at the warehouse and now you deleted the listing. What are you going to do? Well, Amazon has a process too. Amazon is going to take any item that's at the warehouse without a listing and it's going to take all of those same listings and push them over to stranded inventory for you. So now all you have to do is go into stranded inventory, check off all the items that you want to remove and you can remove them from there. You do have to go through and put in the quantities all the way down the line, but it is going to save you the time of having to go back and remember which items you removed. I found that doing it that way was actually easier than having to go back and remove those inactives. And that's all today's video is, folks. I hope that that was helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like for me to make more of them, please remember to smash that like button, share the video, and don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you smash that book bag up there, and we're going to set you up with notifications so that you know when new videos drop. Until next time. Let's go make some money.